What's up guys, this is MySQL Gyan and today's topic is MySQL Performance Tuning. So today we will go through some basic parameters which we should keep in mind while tuning MySQL database. So without further delay, let's start. Okay, so before we start, I want you to keep in mind certain points. So uh, points as in change one setting at a time. So instead of changing multiple settings, just change one setting in configuration file and check if there are performance benefit or not. If you uh, So the thing is, if you will change multiple settings uh, at once and you will get performance benefit, you are not able to identify, okay, by this setting, I got performance benefit or that. So I will recommend change one setting at a time and then uh, check if you are able to get performance benefit or not another thing is most setting can be changed at runtime by set global so instead of uh, directly doing change in configuration file in my.cnf use set global and then uh, change the configuration setting globally and then check if you are getting benefit or not and then if uh, uh, there are performance degrade happen then uh, you can revert uh, that setting up easily by set global to its previous value so instead of doing uh, the changes in uh, configuration file directly if it is a dynamic variable use set global instead and one of the most important thing i want to convey you is that unit of setting so inodb buffer pool size should be set in by whereas max connection is dimensionless so you should remember that uh, okay the, this uh, uh, variable has a what unit is it uh, needs to be set it in bytes or mv or is it a dimensionless because uh, that will be a huge impact if you'll uh, like instead of uh, bytes if you'll give uh, that parameter values in MB so 1000 uh, kilobytes and 1000 MBs is very different right keep in mind that the uh, value of a uh, setting unit of setting is very important so just go uh, through google or just go through mysql uh, website and check unit of setting is it in bytes or mb or is it dimensionless and again one more thing is duplicate setting in configuration files so many time uh, we'll do changes in configuration file and we do not get the proper result and uh, we are uh, checking here and there okay why these values are not changing and uh, uh, we'll do uh, multiple restart and things like that so the thing is it might be possible there are duplicate settings relying in your configuration file which is overriding your uh, values so check uh, that uh, uh, your, your configuration file do not have duplicate values another thing is do not do uh, math like okay my new server has 2x ram let's uh, do my all the setting into 2 so this time uh, th this type of uh, maths is uh, uh, not uh, like uh, applicable to our con mysql configuration if uh, you have 2x RAM or 4x RAM, you cannot uh, just go and change uh, all your settings, all your uh, numbers into 2 or into 4. You need to go through what that variable means, what that variable will do and change your settings accordingly. So uh, I just want to uh, you to remember some basic settings. There are zillions of INODB and MySQL settings, but these are some of the settings which I believe you should remember before hardening. So and uh, during hardening and handing it over uh, the MySQL server to the development team. So some of the settings are the INODB buffer pool size, max connections, INODB file per table, INODB flush lock at transaction commit, query case size, log bin, and there are also many other settings. But these are some of the settings which uh, I have sorted out and i want you to remember all these settings uh, during hardening of mysql server and uh, before uh, delivering the uh, mysql server to the development team so i will go through all uh, these of these settings one by one so let's start okay uh, so i need to give buffer pool size is where data and indexes are cached Having it uh, as large as possible, uh, you make sure that the uh, data is read from the memory and not the disk. So basically, you can allot 70-75% of uh, RAM. So if your RAM is uh, like 8 GB of RAM, you can allot uh, like 5 to 6 GB uh, and something like that. So basically, uh, the thing is you can allot 70-75% uh, to 75 of available RAM to IMDB buffer pool size. So make it as large as possible so that you can ensure that you use your memory, not disk for 
most of your read operation. Keep in mind that all your data and indexes are cached here in INODB buffer pool size. So this is one of the most important parameters you should tune before uh, like handing over the uh, MySQL server. This is one of the most important parameters that will impact the performance of MySQL queries as well. So I just wanted you to remember this parameter. This is also uh, one of the most uh, important parameters that will uh, ask that, that many of the many of you have faced in MySQL interview questions as well. So this is a, a one one of the parameters which is uh, uh, which is good to remember. And uh, it's a, it's a very simple as well. Like uh, this is where data and indexes are cached, and you can uh, put 70 75 percent of the value of total available there. Okay, so another important setting is maximum uh, connections, max underscore connections. Uh, so uh, this is number of available connections which can connect to your MySQL instead. So if you are frequently getting too many connections error, it might be possible that your maximum connections is too low. So first you you should check your max underscore connections. If it is uh, moderate, then it, it, it might also be possible that applications are not closing the connections. So uh, you should also check with front-end developers after uh, opening the connection and executing their processes they should close the connections because it might be possible that there, there are many instances where uh, front-end developers are just connecting to the database mysql instances opening the connection and uh, doing their uh, uh, calculations and doing their processing and uh, just not closing the connections so uh, this those type of connections are also causing uh, the error so uh, it might be possible but you need to investigate in that case also so uh, if you are getting too many connections error frequently you just need to check max underscore connection variable and uh, you are good to go. Okay, uh, so another important setting is INODB file per table. This is one of the most important settings as per me. So this setting will uh, allow INODB it should to store data and indexes in shared table space or in separate IBD file. Having it enabled allows you to uh, reclaim space while dropping, truncating or rebuilding a table. Uh, with current version of MySQL, that is MySQL 5.6 and newer version, by default it is on. Keep in mind that when you enable this setting, uh, the uh, here after the newer tables will uh, get stored in the separate uh, IBD files but the existing tables which uh, was already being created have uh, are in common table spaces only so uh, for that tables you need to drop and recreate those tables this setting is advantageous in most of the cases and mostly uh, only only thing uh, only disadvantages uh, uh, like only uh, drawback of uh, this anodb file per table when you you have huge amount of anodb tables like in 10,000s 20,000s or lakhs of anodb tables then it might create an issue Otherwise, uh, uh, it is very beneficial uh, if you enable this uh, setting so as to reclaim space while dropping, recreating or truncating this sort of uh, tables. One of the most important setting uh, is INODB plus locket transaction commit. This setting tells uh, us that uh, committed transaction at how many at, lay, at how much interval uh, committed transaction are plus two read or So by default it is one means INODB is fully asset compliant. So uh, one uh, this setting uh, one is good for uh, master sets uh, where and uh, like highly transactional systems such as banking as sectors and all where uh, the transaction is either committed in whole or not at all. So the thing is. Uh, so the, uh, some transaction is going on and there is some sort of hardware failure so in that case the uh, transaction is either committed or the uh, as a whole or reverted as a whole right and two means uh, committed transaction of plus two read or lock but only once a second so this setting is a uh, less reliable so once a second the committed transaction of plus two read or lock and zero is even faster so performance is uh, more in terms of uh, zero but uh, you are more likely to lose some data in case of a uh, crash so it is only a good value for a replica so uh, if uh, you have a replica uh, set uh, you are working on replica so you can uh, uh, trust uh, this setting with uh, zero because uh, anyways your master is uh, with setting uh, one so the, you can always recover the data from master so uh, there are uh, by default it is one two is faster and zero is uh, more faster than one and two but uh, you are more likely to lose some data in case of a failure so recommendation is uh, we can uh, go ahead with the, the two where uh, committed transaction are plus to read or lock once a second but again if you, you are uh, uh, like system is highly critical system uh, highly transactional system then uh, you should always go with default setting which is one
another important configuration parameter is query cache and query cache size it completely depends on your application and indexing whether to enable or disable query cache so as per me you should disable query cache so that you will come to know the actual performance of your database and actual do of your, your queries uh, so if you uh, you have uh, like a uh, proper indexes on your tables and your queries are well lit and as per those indexes uh, then uh, you shouldn't be having any problems so query cache should be disabled uh, in most of the cases is but again it depends uh, like if you are if your queries are redundant queries mostly redundant queries then uh, you should enable the query cache uh, again query cache will put an additional uh, button on the database so for uh, validating and invalidating the queries uh, from uh, cache so it completely depends on uh, your application if you want to enable or disable query cache but, uh, but as per me uh, you should disable the query cache and uh, write the uh, queries as per the indexes uh, you have added and if uh, not that uh, expert explain those queries uh, which are uh, poorly performing at proper indexes and then stabilize the database performance instead. Okay, so last but not the least, uh, logbin. Logbin is also one of the most important configuration uh, setting which I want to discuss with you. So enabling binary login is mandatory if you want the server to act as a replication master. So if you want to set up a master and uh, slave uh, setup, then logbin is mandatory. And uh, also if uh, you have a single server and you want a point in time recovery, then also uh, uh, for point in time recovery, you can enable logbin. So restore to the uh, latest backup and I log bin for point in time uh, recovery, but uh, make sure to uh, like uh, purge these binary logs, otherwise, uh, the size of uh, your logs will be uh, very large because uh, each and every query will be captured here in log bin. So, make sure uh, to enable uh, your purging of binary logs and uh, to set uh, this uh, expiry log days for this uh, log bin. Okay, that's it from my side. This is MySQL Gyan, and I will see you in the next video.